and we're live. <clears throat> morning thoughts, morning thoughts, morning thoughts. Shout out Seymour. Black Eagle is in the building early. Sean Cassell is here this morning, says please hit the like button as you join the live. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra, special, big up, shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms and pops, my retirees. Shout out to the drivers, the Uber driver, Lyft driver, truck driver, taxi driver, food delivery driver, school bus driver, garbage truck drivers, round town and long distance truck drivers. Shout out to the crossing guard, school teachers, students going to school, law enforcement personnel, medical field personnel. Shout out to the chefs in the kitchen, the secretaries in the offices. Shout out to security guards. But now forget your brother. Shout out to whatever your job description is, whatever you do for a living. As long as you're not robbing, pillaging, and plundering, and you're up and out to get your honest bread, shout out to you. Shout out to every single clean-hearted, good-hearted person who wants good for others. As much as you want good for yourself, you're a good person if that is you. And here we are on this beautiful Thursday morning. Somebody said yesterday, I can't wait for tomorrow, so flow, so we could. It's the freaking weekend, baby. Me never tell them, though, I said today is Thursday. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow is that. Tomorrow is that. Today is Thursday. It is March 7th, 2024. And me do my taxes yesterday, I see people, and Jaja God, no. <laughs> Boy, it's like the more you elevate, is the more. You know that Bears Hammond song? Every time I lift my head above water and try to save myself from drown, there's an overnight sky. I saw me feel, <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. Every damn year, tax time is like pressure. You know, you know, the goal is to, the goal is to earn what we're earning, but be at home earning it. And when I say at home, I mean. U.S. is my home, of course. I've been here since I was a child. I wouldn't have it any other way. But, you know, I'm one day in the Caribbean now. I want to be in Jamaica specific now. Um, but I still have a lot of work to do before I could realize this dream, you know? Yeah, man. Anyway, I'm not going to cry on nobody's shoulder this morning. The resistance is real, my friend, Wayne Core. But we have to keep on fighting the fight. And we have to strategize and plan and execute. Not true? Yeah, but we'll get to it because we were built for this. So we will get to it. Shout out to everybody whose name I did not call. And let's shoot the elephants in the room immediately. With the miscellent Townsend, thank you for being here. Miscellent Townsend says, I did my taxes yesterday too. I never get back nothing. Me always owe them. <laughs> I'm not, I am not alone. You are here with me. So I not feel so alone. You see, that's life. Sometimes you think you're going through stuff alone. You just need one person next to you to say, boy, the same thing happened to me. You know, you feel better immediately. <laughs> so I don't feel so bad. Thank you, Millicent Townsend. Now go see what um what's gonna happen when wife is gonna do fair taxes to, or whenever she go do them. Anyhow, let's get into this and shoot the elephants in the room immediately. Beachy Stout. He was found guilty for of murder yesterday. And you see the video up already. That was the breaking news video. You know, them, this is a huge topic because we have followed this for a while. Are you right? <laughs> Boy, <laughs> I got to pay back 3000 God of mercy. Yep, that's, that's where we're at. In, in them kind of something they are going. Um, we don't want to talk taxes this morning. We want to talk beaches out. Listen, we have an hour and about 15 minutes to get to the material. And we have a lot of stuff to talk about. So roll with the program. It's going to be fast this morning. Beach is out. Uh, found guilty. The JLP politician Innis or Innis, he retracts his statement. Um, government badness are gone. Leota Bradshaw, Philip Paulwell, the situation with the 10-month-old baby and her mother. Some new information came out about that. Very disturbing information concerning the role of each individual that they played in that whole situation. And the embattled Haitian Prime Minister is said to be running to Jamaica for political asylum. But the Jamaican authorities have something to say about that. And one more topic is the woman who threw the baby off of the roof the other day. Get mad with our baby father. Walk up the step them. I believe the building was like three, four flights up and 
fling the baby off of the roof and the baby dead, of course. She was in court yesterday and some things transpired, which we are going to talk about as well. So those are our four topics and each one can be time consuming. So let's have you, the audience, pick where I start out this morning and we'll take it from there. You have 60 seconds to choose. Is it going to be Beach Stout? Is it going to be the JLP politician who take back his uh, statement? Is it going to be Leota Bradshaw, Philip Paulwell situation? Is it going to be about Haiti? Or is it going to be the woman who threw the baby off the roof? You choose. 60 seconds, go. All right. And we're off. And we see King David says, Beachy. Lovely Anika says, Baby. Kaz Robinson says, Beachy. Marcia Walters, Beachy. Audrey Wright, Beachy. Erica Dean, blessings. Get Beachy out of the way. Missy Bram Bram says, Up, up, up. BM says, JLP. Angel D says, Beachy. It look like it's going to be Beachy. Seymour says, Queen Galore in the house today. All right, I'm going to heal up themselves. British Jamaican girl says, Beachy. JC, JLP. Uh, Donna Davis says, Beachy. Miss Goldie Robinson says, Beachy. Seymour says, Beachy. Beachy, it look like it's going to be. King David says, Beachy, Beachy, Beachy. Dolly Walter Riley says, The baby. Andrew Skinner says, baby. King King Big says, Haiti. King Big's are you alone? They are Haiti. Bachi says, be beachy. Kettle Flay 101, big up yourself, says, beachy. Darty T, baby. David King, beachy. Beachy, it look like it's going to be with only 15 seconds to go. Andrew Skinner says, baby. King David says, beachy. Marvin the Point, Marvin the Point, Jamaica Kerr, beachy. Black Eagle, beachy. Be Pussy Galore, Beachy. Andrew Skinner says, LOL. Country Girl, Beachy. Grace Jones, Beachy. And we're down to the end. Five, four, three, two, and one. And Beachy it is. All right. Portland businessman, uh, Beachy, Everton, Beachy, Stout McDonald, who is also the father of Andre McDonald. If you don't know, because some of live under a rock, you're too busy for real life stuff happening around you. Andre McDonald is a, or was a U.S. Air Force major. Big man on campus. You salute them when you see them. You hold that salute till they drop theirs, you drop yours. You don't be on a base and you pass a major, a colonel, any one of them people there, and you don't throw up your salute. It's ranking, right? He's the son of Beachy Stout. How ironic life is that Andre ends up taking the life of Andreen McDonald in the United States of America, in Bear, Texas, where he was tried, and he was sentenced to 20 years, and then they brought him back in the courtroom and added an extra five years, which was a follow-up I was supposed to do, but I didn't do it. Because when we watched the original trial of Andre McDonald, it ended with 20 years. He went back in court, and under a plea deal, because of what he did to her body, they gave him an extra five years. On top of that. So he is currently serving 25 years in Texas prison. Now we fast forward to his father. And his father just got found guilty for murdering his wife, which was much younger than he was. So if this happened in 2020, 2021, she was 32. Beachy is 66 today, uh, about to be 67. That means that he was 30 to 31 years older than she was. Let me start out by saying this. Someone, oh man, tap take up old man, man. And you know, so the man way older than you too, right? And you just planning a joyride all along the way. Now, this is no excuse to kill a woman because both parties have choices. And the choice is, if you're not being satisfied, take your ass and go somewhere else. Never on the bumble cloud shirt this morning. So, you know, says so a bumble cloud kind of morning. All right. She could have went other places. Him never have to do him do to her either. And it's not justified what he did either. Bun shouldn't make you kill somebody. Bun shouldn't make you run. Right? All right. So with that said, you know, a big age difference. And he has health issues, which he himself admitted to. I've heard people say it. But I'm a kind of person that listened for it from the horse's mouth. And he said it when the details came out. You know, him having health issues, which they said the tea is not working. And then the deal did stop work altogether and she was wild and out there in all kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, I said, because somebody said yesterday, here you go. So Flo always have a way out for himself. Some of you do not understand objective reasoning. Some of you do not understand how to 
Like, let me let me explain it to you like this. If you're following a court case, you're saying, yes, he's going to get free. Could also change to, nope, I don't think he's going to be free. That could also change back to, yep, he's going to be free again. Remember, I know, the court case was extensive. It had 14 witnesses. Different things came out in court that none of us knew. So when I said, if you were following me, somebody said yesterday, SMA shaking my head. Here you go. First you say, I'm, I'm not going to um, get found guilty. I'm going to walk. I know you talk about you didn't know the same thing. I'm going to find guilty. Make up your mind. Something. Let me explain what happened there, right? Because someone no kind of, and I said to the person, I said, some of you are really slow. Like, you need to be spoon fed, but there's no disrespect. Uh, some people say that to me all the time. So, Flo, why you drag the content? So, I'm just a spoon feed people because I want everybody to be on the same page. And I understand all of us ain't flying at 100 miles per hour, right? I'm watching the, the, the trial unfold. I'm watching the trial from before it even went to court, gathering information on this. Based on the information we got from the beginning that was released by credible sources, law enforcement, law, lawyers, attorneys, etc., we said, hmm. This looked like an open and shut case. It looked like he's going to be found guilty because the hitman that he hired, Bubla, has already confessed and the information that he gave to the courts was considered valid enough for him to get time off of it. They didn't say, oh, we don't believe you, go home. They took his information. So in order for them to take that information, there must be some validity to the information. Now, that same piece of information is now used against Beachy Stout and Oscar Barnes. Okay, it can't be valid to put away Bubbler, but not valid enough to apply to Beachy and Oscar. So I started out saying, Ross, the man talk already and he must give details of everything. Looks like you're going down. And then when they started cross-examining Bubbler in court now, because he was the main person out of the 14 people that testified, you have to follow the case. When he started and they started cross-examining him and building so much doubt in his case and twisting up his words and making it seem like him never sure where him did I say and him can't read and him this and him that and him the other, it started to dawn on me that, okay, damn, he might not be a credible witness, you know? And based on that, I said, hmm, it looked like Beachy I got walk because if this is the only witness they have. He has not tied Beachy Stout to the murder yet, except for word of mouth, nothing else, right? And I said, one thing I'm waiting on, remember? I said, one thing I'm waiting on is the voice notes to come out, and they do a transcript of the voice notes so we hear what is being said in it. Then when the voice notes came out, and they were talking about uh, he should make sure him answer him phone when him call and he was telling him he go up there last night and we did a good tweet last night but she come out of the car and run and she run go inside and the helper come out and answer I said this is intricate detail that he was in the plotting to have her killed so me say yep he's screwed he's going to prison then they came out and said the conspiracy to murder Charge charges have been thrown out. Well, nobody never see Beachy kill the girl, actually. So you can't say murder, right? And he had a good alibi, which took him away from that place. He wasn't there. I know him do it, right? So the only other thing they could have caught him on was conspiracy to murder, which means he could be the mastermind behind it. He plotted, planned it, put the people in place to get it done, like Leo the Bradshaw kind of thing. Okay. When they threw that out, when the judge says that get fling out, I again said, okay, well, if that's fling out, Beachy is walking. You understand? So you have to follow the case, and it can change your, he's going to go. No, he's not going to go. Yep, he's going to go. So some of you like, oh, so Flo always argue on both sides and straddle the fence, like try to keep himself safe. I don't know what the hell you are talking about. I could literally walk back everything and give it to you so you understand it. Now, end of the day, Beach get found guilty, right? And the one person I said for sure, I thought, see, I'm man enough. The one person I said for sure I thought was going to walk, which was Oscar Barnes. Because Oscar Barnes, there is nothing 
that ties Oscar Barnes to this case except Bubla's testimony. Bubla said, he might ask her to do this, he might ask her to do that, then plan this, then plan that. But there was no evidence otherwise that tied him to it. So I'm still surprised that he got found. And I was watching the attorneys give their piece after court yesterday. And one of them said, whoever does, he said he is absolutely surprised that uh, Oscar Barnes, not Beachy, Oscar Barnes got found guilty. Because there's nothing that ties him to it. And he went further and he said, Who, whatever attorney takes up and does this appeal, he's going to have a field day with this appeal when it comes to Oscar Barnes. So yes, I'm still surprised that Oscar Barnes got found guilty. And, and let's be honest, I know Sammy want them to be found innocent. Is not that I'm dealing with law. Not shared tree mechanic talk law and how the law plays out in the courtroom, right? The jury, the words of Bobla weighed heavy on the jury. And he explained himself in a way that it related to what the whole big picture was. Oscar get found guilty, Beachy got found guilty, and that's that. Now, at 66 years old, heading away to prison. Uh, for that murder in the manner in which that murder was committed, you are looking at a whole lot of years in prison. I know it's Jamaica, and I know they're not going to give him no 100 years or nothing like that, because that's not how Jamaica flex. But I always use Vibes Cartel case as a marker. So I say 35 is probably, before eligible for parole, is probably where that is going to be heading, right? Now you must also remember, that he has another court case coming up for his first wife. And I am of the opinion that they probably won't be able to hold him on the other case for his first wife because the case is so old. Many witnesses have moved away out of the country. Many witnesses have uh, probably even passed away in the process and so on and so forth. But you don't know what cards the prosecution is holding until we go to court and they throw them out in front of you. That is why I watch these cases intently, right? So when time them throw, I don't know. Maybe when he goes to court for a second wife, the star witness individual who's been living overseas all this time suddenly walks into the courtroom. Hmm. Like in the Ninja Man trial. See, you remember Ninja Man trial? In Ninja Man trial, there was one individual who if it, it, the case hinged on him and his testimony he made he made a statement that said if i the last thing me do me i show up and make sure I say you go to prison he was there same seat all this other thing i don't know if they had him in witness protection or if he flee he flee the country on his own but they thought he was nowhere to be found or so we thought but the prosecution knew that they had that one loaded in the chamber. And when he walked into the courtroom, them said that's when Ninja Man had the cardiac issue and had to be rushed to the hospital. Because when him see the man, him said blood clot. Okay, yo, it done. Anybody else but this person. So we don't know what prosecution has up their sleeve. They never give us everything. If they gave us everything before court start, there wouldn't be a reason to have a court, a trial, right? The public would just be the jury and they would just go off of what public say. So you have to watch these court cases intently. Justice served? Yeah. Um, I said it that I, I, I also said, yo, you look like me, Chagawak, but me not see how the judge could throw out the conspiracy charges after those conversations were revealed with Bubla. Those were intricate friggin' conversations and they all showed that he was the mastermind behind uh, his wife, Tanya's murder. So justice served? The answer is yes. Justice was served. Now, hmm, his, um, her mom, her mom had a lot to say. And her sister, when the verdict was read and it said guilty, 
I put on my glasses, so I'm going to look sideways because them, them light here, the big box light you see in there, is going to blind my eyes. We are going to this. They said the mom shouted out, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, those were the words uttered from the shaking lips. Wait, wait. Me take that back. It's not the mom that said, let's go. Those were the, this is the twist in the story. Sorry, those were the words that were uttered from the lips of Beachy Stout. Let's go. If you hear me yesterday in the video that I put up, I said, saddle up for the long ride. Yeah. I think when they read the verdict, Beachy just summed up his life and he said, Fuck, I'm 66. Even if them give me 15 years, 20 years for this, at 86, may I come out and may have one next murder case for go? In the same justice system? Hmm. Rotted. And it's two separate cases. They're not going to try him on a separate complete case and then talk about run the time concurrent. It's two complete cases. If all the details were worked out in this one case, they would have said, okay, guilty on this one, guilty on that one, run it concurrent. Me not think them are going to run nothing concurrent. I think whatever they give him, the quivering lips. I saw them say the man mouth did a shake, like him false teeth, them a rock. Boy, them say, when time trouble, take your picnic boots, fit you not true. You want to push your size 12 them in a little friggin like a picnic size 2 shoes. I run down the street, pick the shot, fit you. Your big old extra, extra large self. <laughs> Boy, it get rough. It get rough. Them said the man ball out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Where? You ever get frightened yet and you just ball out? Why? And you don't know why you ball <laughs> Other than you're frightened. Yeah, I think that happened to him. And he ball out. Let's go. It says those were the words that were uttered from the shaking lips of convicted murderer Everton Beach Stout McDonald as he stretched his arms out. Inviting the police to slap on the handcuffs and hit promptly and to remove him from the courtroom. Him ready for go. Him say, let's go. <laughs> like that. Put on the handcuff and take me out of this bumbo hole. McDonald is 69 years old now. I don't know why I thought he was 66. That was what was revealed before. So if he's 69 now, Tanya was 32 when she passed. And that was, what, four years ago, right? So that means, say, yeah, he's 34 years older than Tanya. Right. So 69-year-old and co-accused Oscar Barnes is 39 years old. And they were found guilty of murder and conspiracy to murder the former, which is Beachy Stout's wife, Tanya, by the seven-member jury at 3.40 p.m. yesterday. It was said that the jury took about an hour and five, ten minutes or so to come back with their, the jury had it in the bag already. You, anytime a jury come back in an hour, just know, say, you're going straight to prison, right? Nobody never come back and say, well, could I see this other piece of information again? Or could I listen to this other thing again? That jury was like, mm -hmm. yeah, we are set for you. All right, where's the judge? Go. All right, we'll be right back. Them go around a back, them piece of bun and cheese, drink one box of juice, come back guilty. Done. One hour. The jury consists of three women, four men, and it took approximately 64 minutes, see there? One hour and four minutes to arrive at the unanimous verdict. Tanya's mother, who is Sonia Davis Hamilton. Boy, woman, you're strong. That's how I'm going to say to she. Yeah, Miss Sonia, you're strong. You know, there's another rumor out there because you know that Tanya's father was gunned down. Somebody was telling me yesterday, I don't know how true it is, that when he was getting shot up, his wife was present and she did get shot too. But him dead and she survived. Because there was a point where they did not approve. The father especially made it known that he did not approve of the relationship between the elder businessman and his young daughter, right? Because he knew of the businessman and his runnings and he never wanted him daughter and that. And next thing you know, the man pick up gunshot and dead. So that's another story. When Oscar Barnes was in court and he said, Beachy, tell him, say, Tanya 
said she found out who killed her father and she want gun for go kill the man there. And he said, but I me kill him. Hmm. An individual said to me, yo, so Flo, that man that killed a couple of people well, and it's all going to come out later. For me, that is all hearsay. I don't know how I do my thing already, right? I move on credibility. So I'm telling you what I'm hearing, but I'm not telling you that this is factual. So we will continue to look to see if more things will come out later on of him being tied to anything else. Missy Bram Bram, have a wonderful day, sis. Missy people, I said bye, Missy Bram Bram. So have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you at another time, all right? Walk good. All right. So Tanya's mother now, Sonia Davis Hamilton, and her sister, Nicole Hamilton Linton, they both waited on hearing the verdict with the latter briskly leaving the courtroom. So them take out the man them out of the courtroom so that she couldn't disturb the trial judge, Chester Stamp, who was still presiding over the matter. So... The sister briskly left the courtroom. The mom stayed there. Both were present at sitting throughout the six-month-long trial. They didn't miss a day. They told reporters outside of the courtroom that the time had finally come for them as a family to try to heal from all this matter. And it had taken such a toll on their family that they were stretched beyond, uh, had stretched beyond local shores to their siblings and relatives overseas who were also taking this heavily who had been monitoring this high-profile case from wherever they were at. She said, I was there having anxiety attacks, waiting for this verdict. This is the mom. I'm happy about the verdict, very much. This has been for so long, and this family has gone through so much trauma. I've lost my husband as well, and I was shot as well. See it here? I lost my husband as well, so it's not hearsay. Shout out to the person who told me that. Before this, can we just read this too? Um, I was shot. This is just released. I was shot as well and left for dead in the car with my husband, she said. Wow. Based on how things go, it seemed like he was the person who did it, she said. Mm. Remember Azkaban say? Him tell him say, I him do it. The same person. Who killed with daughter tried to kill us both. My husband died, but I survived. Davis had damn. Davis Hamilton was among the 14 witnesses that were called to the prosecution. Lawyers consisting of Luke Cook, Luke, Luke Cook, Crown Counsel, and Deputy Director of Public Prosecution, Sophia Rowe, to give evidence during the trial. I'm happy about the verdict. I'm very, very happy. I have two children in the States. One in Canada and another one in England. And they are not even focused on their work nowadays. They are so traumatized. Sassy was the smallest one of the bunch. That's the baby. And she was the one who was taken out, says Davis Hamilton. She said that her children have been stressed to the extent that their personal and their work lives have been greatly affected by this. No closure. This has been very hard for us. My daughter here almost fainted after she heard the verdict in the courthouse just now. We have to be fanning her. Normally, she wouldn't be the one that would be crying. I would be the one that's crying all the time. And she would be there for me. It's been hard for all of us. A tearful Hamilton joined in and then said, I'm feeling overjoyed of the verdict because we have been waiting for this for so long. It has been six months of waiting and waiting and waiting. Six months of a trial. We have been through it. We are a close-knit family. And for one of us to have been taken out like this in this manner, it has been very hard for us. She was the baby of the family, and they took her out in a gruesome manner. The prosecutor told Tanya's, the prosecutor said that Tanya's charred body, her remains were found next to her burnt-out car, her Toyota Axia motor car in Sherwood Forest in Portland in July of 2020. Her throat was slashed. She had been stabbed at least nine times in her chest. The prosecution key witness, a self-confessed criminal, which we know Delvalin Bobla Minot, testified 
that he had been the one who was contracted to do the killing. He subcontracted Barnes to do it. And Minot got 19 years and 10 months for that, of which he must serve 10 mandatory before he is eligible himself for parole. He's eligible for parole after 10 years. And that's a part of his deal that he made. Because they, I guess they had to make a deal with somebody in the bunch in order to bring down the rest of who are the mastermind behind this. Because if everybody did go up there and say, I'm not talking, they could have possibly walked. Now, during this evidence in chief, he told the jurors that he had been contact contracted by Beachy Stout and a $3 million offer was on the table, right? Minot further testified that he subcontracted Barnes and Barnes was the one who carried out the hit and he watched him do it to Beachy Stout's specification. Don't shoot her. Me no want her shot that too quick. I saw me want you to do me want you to stab her up and me want you to bust her throat. And that's exactly how they carried it out. Hamilton Linton said, as my mom said, my father was also killed. So it's not just one victory for us here today because we all know where that came from. This is for my sister and this is for my dad as well. We can't bring them back, but at least justice is served. The family is, is extremely happy. My sisters overseas, they are ringing off my phone because I did tell them that the verdict was guilty. She said that they want to spend some time now healing as a family and trying to bring themselves back to some semblance of normalcy. Just for want of a better word, because we will never be normal. We will never be the same because of what has happened to us. She said that men who target women are weak and they are evil. Let me put something else in there. Women who target men because of their things, knowing that you don't want nothing else with him, and you plan to deceive him and to get to his things, you are also wicked and evil. And it can backfire in a big way. Listen. Me no beg friend. I don't want nobody come tell me about no soft law. You always blame the victim. No, we must we must be for real as people. We must be 100% honest. This is the only way we can stop things like this from continuing to happen. Some women are never told that these things can happen, so they go off doing what they do. Yeah, me I go use him. Yes, girl. Man, you the whole line money from way back when. From me a picnic and them I use the word boops and boopsy all the way up to now, right? And then the, 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 the end result of it, in a lot of cases, the woman, the woman makes front page friggin' news. So, wise up yourself and remember where Granny said, if you don't want the man, don't take nothing from the man, not even a icy mint, not even a sweetie, not take nothing from him. Because when man give you things, him expects something in return and ain't nobody giving you nothing for free. Me hear my granny tell the young, uh, the, the picnic them, the girl them that all the time, right? I hear the older females in my family tell the younger ones them that all the time. From me, I grew up till now. So, hey, it goes both ways, man. But she is right. The man them who target women, because some men have them riches and they are older and they know that some females are either in poverty or not necessarily in poverty, but want things. So they use things to lure them in, you know, and I'm advising the men to be realistic about yourself. What do you think a, a woman who is 34 years younger than you could have want with you possibly? Eh? Don't let your money and your material stuff get to your head. Don't let that get to your head. And don't use your stuff to dangle it over her head and be all narcissistic with it. I control you because I give you everything. Go over there, sir. Come back over here, sir. You're not going anywhere. Take that off. Put that on. Sit down. Stand up. Move. You know what I mean? Women, if you find yourself in that position and you genuinely have feelings for that man there, regardless, run. See him where. Right? But that's, it, it's that kind of a dynamic of a relationship. It's never, oh, she loves me and we're going to create life together and live happily ever after. And it's not going to happen. In most cases, it is not going to happen, especially in Western society, maybe in Eastern society, because I've studied their society and how it goes. And it looked like them good with the 30, 40 years of age gap 
the woman just sit down and take care of him good and patiently wait for him to accumulate wealth and then him pass away. And she kiss him on him forehead and sing him a lullaby as he dies. And then when him dead, she got to do what she want to do. Or she stay single. But in a few Western society, that's not the case. If a younger woman who's 30 plus years your junior is after you and you have a bag of things, everybody can see from a mile away. So it's not loyalty and love. It's a bag of things you have. And you come with everything on your forehead and she want some. That's it. That's it. So it goes both ways. And both parties, both sides bear responsibility. And let's be realistic. And nobody beat us and try to soften up nobody's feelings. What's done is done. The most we can do from this is learn and teach from this and move forward. Hoping that somebody here, somebody learn, and we see our life from this. Now, I'm looking at him sitting there, she said, and he is so weak and disgusting, man. And that is how I feel about him right now. Him could have leave her, make she go on. My sister, your sister could have left him, make him go on too. Yeah. She could have walked away from the big, she could have walked away from the luxury vehicles, she could have walked away from the constant money that was in. she could have walked away from it all. She knows that the man body never turned toddy, she couldn't sit down panny, because he can't turn up for she sit down pan, and she out the road and find other body if he turn up for sit down pan, so she could have walked away already. Oh, what tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. You see, we always feel like, say, Oh, I'm deceiving and tricking somebody when all are rotted long. You are the one that is being deceived as well, tricked as well, and will end up having to pay the consequences in the end as well. You can't escape. Right. You know, we have a saying in Jamaica, when you have dig grave, dig two. Yeah, when you have dig grave, man, dig two. One for the person you think and one for you. Uh-huh. Vince, see there? She gonna grave him, gonna prison. There you have it. There you have it. The elders never lied. Them used to talk to we in parables, but them never lie. So Vincent Wellesley, one of the two attorneys that are representing Barnes, said that he was very disappointed with this verdict. I do not believe that the evidence was sufficient for them to return such a verdict. My impression, though, he said, have listened, having listened to the summation and having discerned at least seven grounds of appeal, him say. At least seven grounds of appeal. That means, say, seven things went wrong in the summation from the judge that they can present at an appeal court that might be able to overturn the verdict for Oscar Barnes. I don't believe that the summation was an unbiased summation. And so I know. Not why they returned the verdict of guilty, but I was not satisfied with the summation that the judge gave. He said that he had deducted several grounds and whoever the appeal attorney is will have a field day representing Oscar Barnes at the appeal court. I heard him say it live yesterday. I watched him on video say it. I didn't read this till now. I'm reading this to you because this was published this morning, right? And it is the same exact thing which I said before. Judge Stamp wrapped up his summation in six days. The longest summation I ever seen. And that, Mr. Foreman, is the summary of the case of the prosecution. It is more detailed than I normally would. Stamp had said before retiring the jury pool to begin deliberation at 2.19 p.m. yesterday. The trial judge thanked the jurors for their time in the case and said that he hoped that other Jamaicans would be willing to play a similar role, show up for jury duty. Jamaica has a huge problem with people showing up for jury duty and actually sticking through a case. For whatever the 10 different reasons are, they just have a problem putting a jury pool together for, for cases. Now, Earl Hamilton, senior attorney for Beachy Stout, told journalists that they accept the verdict but that it was not one that they expected. I don't know how they never expect that still, but them said them accept the verdict. We're very positive in the defense we put forward. But for now, we just have to go with what the jury has decided, and we will see what happens after this. The lead investigator, Detective Sergeant, who was on hand for the verdict, was beaming from ear to ear with a big old smile at the outcome of the high public 
interest case. He did not have any words to say to the media. He only said, justice is served. McDonald and Oscar Barnes were remanded in custody until May 16th when they will be sentenced. Today is March 7th, 2024. May 16th of 2024, we will hear how long they will be doing in prison. The legal woes of Beachy are far from over though because he is set to stand trial next year for the 2009 murder of his first wife, 50 year old at the time of her death, Marlene Petal MacDonald. She was shot and killed outside of her Boundbrook Port Antonio home in Portland. I believe she was arriving home from work and a car does pull up and then done her up like that and drive off. There's a big story behind that, which we will cover at a later time, at another date. But we look forward to that one as well. I hope not, none of them see the light of day again, Pussy Galore says. Boy, is Jamaica we're talking about? I was wondering if the police officer she was sleeping with. Um, I was wondering if if he was the police. Who, the, who Kai Tai Jai, the one that was at the trial? If you're talking about the one that was at the trial, is not the one that she was sleeping with. Remember, Bobla described the one that she was sleeping with. She said, him says, an Indian man, half Indian, tall, dark, curly hair, big strapping man is who she was sleeping with. And Beecher did send him figure spy Panar, and he came back and delivered the message that, yes, it's him. And them have something now. Go on. Yeah. And then Beecher. Put him in a the Bima, the black BMW, and drive him go around at the man yard and show him, said, this is where he lives. Cause him know about him already and been collecting information on that police officer. So then Karim go scope out the house because he wanted Oscar to kill that police officer as well. Remember? Right. Boy. That one here. Now that now that, that part is done. I encourage those who are film enthusiasts, Mr. Brown and the rest of Uno, this is a good time to put your you put your resources together, pull your team together. Now make Netflix and them people that come pick it up. If Uno can put this together as a good little series or even a movie, because it's our story. It comes from Jamaica. You can shop this back to Netflix, my friend. This was a damn Netflix series that had us all glued to the edge of the seat. What go happen next? No, him go walk. Rock to the look like him. No, I'm go walk, you know. Ross, them throw out the something they look like him. I'll walk, you know. Blood fire, I'm guilty. Yeah, it, 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 it was that. It was that. Well, justice is served. For once, we can say money. Can you know them saying Jamaica money run things? And I've always told people in Jamaica, money don't run things. If you have money, that's good. Your money might have put you in a company, a certain company. Jamaica, we have classism, not racism, so much. Money run things a little bit, yeah. But connections is where really run things. Now, if you're a part of certain brotherhoods, certain fraternities and sororities and secret order and this, that and the other, them something that we see of you. You nor none of your children will ever go into a courthouse in Jamaica and come out guilty. Remember me tell you that. I guess Beachy wasn't one of those. Or it was time to hand up a sacrifice because too much was on the table and too many others could have been exposed. Right? Because here say I'll police the involving the first wife murder, you know, and all that. So hey, may I sink him from early before him end up sink the whole away? That could have played a part in this too. We don't know. The part, though, about the mother saying she was there when her husband was shot up. She got shot up, too. The sister saying they know, they all know where this come from. Is him. I'm wondering if there's any way they can gather enough evidence on this to pursue criminal matters in a court of law to have him charged for the killing of Tanya's father. As well. This can get out of hand and more and more can happen. So we have to keep our eyes on this and see where this one is going to go. 
mix it with the sun case and make a series. Not true, Patsy Barton. Yes. Yes. Mix it with the sun case and make a series. You know what? I might be here calling out filmmakers. I might be willing to invest in a something like that in a car. Me know say that's if it's shot properly, professionally done, with good acting, lighting, editing, etc. This is something you could shop to like Netflix. Mm -hmm. And if it's good, Netflix will buy it. But anyhow, we're moving right along because we have other things to talk about, right? All right. They need to add your commentary to it as well because you play an important role. Boy, I'm stick with the story. That's what we do over here. You know, we, st we stick with the stories. That's what we tell people all the time. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified. Uh, every story that we follow, we always follow the story through to the end. This started with us following it in 2020. Here we are in 2024 at end, and this is not the end because more trial coming, sentencing next, more trial for the other wife, and suspicion of other murders, which could end up being more trial again. Let's go! As the man say, put on the handcuff and take me out of this bumbo cloth. Ah, oh boy. Mm. Be careful what you do here in life. I'm glad I learned that early because why when them consequences they come, and you pay them. It's never is all the smile get wiped out of your, off of your face? All the jo your lip a quiver, them say. <laughs> Oui, but I saw it go. All right, let's talk about this now. Moving right along, we 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 hope we we pray nothing but healing for that family. Um, it's, it's definitely not sweet to lose a family, a loved one in that manner. And regardless of what she did, I'll say it again: she didn't deserve to be killed like that. You know. Some weak ross jellyback man will feel like them own woman. Listen, if the woman give you bun bread or left, that I look at that as God's way of if my woman a cheat on me, don't know, it's because God don't want me to know. God don't want me to know because right now God wants me to focus on something else. Focus so flow. Build your resume. Build your wealth. Build your this. Put this, that, and that in order. You have six picnic if you think about, not one pum pum. Build this, that, and the other. When the time is right, you will find out. When I do find out if she is, this is the time that God is saying to me, the door is open. You can clearly leave now. You never fling out nobody. You never do nothing wrong to nobody. She did what she did. Go your ways and go find somebody better. That's it. That's it. You know, if you kill off the people, them and then them are fling you in. I'm telling you already, me big and strong, but me dainty. Me not going to nobody prison. I don't want to go there because prison is not for me. Me go kill woman and for the next 30 years. Every time my soap drop in a shower, me afraid to pick you up. No? Me good. Me good. So think about these consequences, man, before you think before you know, carry out these actions that you're carrying out. Because funny enough, the actions last way longer than the damn consequence. Yes, my dainty. I'm here with them bigger chop in a corner when they are prison. So be here. Don't touch me. My soap drop, I kick your soap, go down there, so I don't want no soap for beard. I beard with spit. Don't touch me. I'm scared. Officer, security. I don't want to go to nobody prison. And then figure there would be a man for 30, for what? For 30 years? How much woman out here? Figure there would be a man for the next 30 years, 40 years, how much ever them give you? Now, you don't you know, wish yourself though good. I'm sorry, but you don't. Uh, anyhow. This other one we have to talk about now. The woman who allegedly threw her baby off the roof. Let's take one phone call and then we'll move on. One phone call. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Morning, bro. Good morning, family. How you doing? Yeah, I'm there. All right. Talk to you now. You talk about the beach starting already? You yeah. just joined the live. Oh, you just joined the live? Well, we're just done. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just finished talking about it. Well, hear my two cents funny before you move. <laughs> me, me, me glad to say them find him guilty, right? Mm -hmm. Because as we said at the last part, they look like they're not going to let him free. Right. You know, say, if they may find him not guilty, me have 100% now have no more faith in the justice system. Mm. 100%. Me, 
But me never have none of them from the beginning anyway. So no, it's like I you was have just a small hoping. Person, yeah? You have a small percent. Small percentage. Well, people probably like me too. The, that that like a five ten percent the way you cross yeah. your finger and you see any of them in letter of this brother yeah mm-hmm. this Enos Crime yeah zero mm-hmm. percent yeah. yeah a whole heap of young members and people do cruel things see them letter of it's ex six man and one heap of people mm-hmm. the same you to have a, a, a lobby for the same you they will put up a camera in the house and then something mm-hmm. a whole heap of arms us go on man mm-hmm. If this brother did come out for this, this blatant crime, yeah. Can't talk a kid with the camera, them in the house yeah. or something. Yeah, man. Yeah. But yeah. me talk about this I want, this I hear us wicked crime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Suppose every man, think about the flow. If every man, every man in the kilo man would do a crutches in a Jamaica. Jaja God. Eh? Yeah, but think about this too. If every woman should kill every man where we sling body, did left, right, and center so in that Jamaica. Answer, eh? You keep that, that, that not right, brother. If, you can't you can't deal with a young girl and him go go out with himself and you feel like so you have to bust short mm-hmm. one up vehicle and you have to just walk free to you feel like you have the money. The man ego. A ego yeah. that's in a brother. But this this is why I made a lose faith in our system, brother. Mm-hmm. You hear me I say? The man they have phone evidence. Mm-hmm. They have people who, 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 who had admit to the crime. Mm-hmm. Him man, they have acid buckle. They have him that sitting with them hang. Too much evidence. They have material Too evidence. They have witness. Evidence. They have, yeah. What? Oh, they that's have true. much phone. They have recording. They yeah. should should have this piece of case. I should not even stay so long. Him out evidence for them have. True, true. So you know when me almost think the brother get off. Yes, when my heart jump. All the one of me not related. Yes, when them say. Them throw the, the conspiracy. No conspiracy. Yeah, the conspiracy to murder charge. That's what they say, yo. Him all, him all walk. That's what but I that thought he was going to walk. Mm-hmm. But then I said, no, I said, who they, they can't get murdered then. Right. Because it's all like this. I'm not on the phone. I talk about girl. I talk about jump over fence. Mm-hmm. A housekeeper in a house and two housekeepers. I never get to kill her the night then. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's a conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah. Eh? And if you get him off of no conspiracy, if you not plan it, that means eh, he might not part of murder him. I thought definitely after them said them throw out that it he might go walk. But there was a See him too. Yeah, there was a follow-up that said they amended it, but them oh. never give much more information after that. So I couldn't follow up. I just mm-hmm. said to the audience that they amended it, which means it was back on the table, but in mm-hmm. a different form. So yeah. and yesterday them said they got Get found guilty of murder and they got found guilty of conspiracy to murder. That means it was back on the table. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know if somebody pulled the judge court tail and said, you're mad. Yeah, man. You can't fling out conspiracy. You the yeah. amount of evidence the world just see. And here at least conspiracy have to fly. But yeah. whatever happened behind yeah. the scenes, it played out in court. And yeah. the, you know, the family got some closure and feel like them get some justice which was the most important thing. Yeah, and the brother, the brother would do the crime, him guilty too, right? The brother would do the murder. Yeah, yeah, him get found guilty too, right beside Beatrice. Okay, come me think. This boy, you not talk to me, think him not come off, you know, because he go, come them, like him just in the shadow. Nothing ended the film. Nothing right. towards him. Nothing, heard him out. nothing. And this is why his attorney said, you don't know who is going to handle his appeal, but whoever does it, they're going to have a field deal with it. Because mm. there's nothing that connects him except for word of mouth. Yeah, because yeah. not even for the voice, no, them come like him, they're funny. Nothing. Him not there nowhere upon nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I believe he had them commit the murder. But I'm glad said, me glad said some sort of justice, sir. Mm-hmm. Because the man that even want the woman dead alone, you know, just shot, you know, one short bus and wicked man. One if a animal is But wait till we, we, we have a next nobody, not stranger, you know. We have our next story I covered this morning with the Leo that Bradshaw something. Let's go run through two story real quick and get to that. Stay tuned for that one. Day. You are gonna hear wickedness. Stay so tuned for that one. Real day. quick, the next one, the next one went up on two cases. The other one done already in free up the other one. No man, the next one start next year. Huh? All right, respect. All Look right, manners. All right. So no more phone calls. Let's move right along. Just to throw this out there. Um you know, I've been around, I've seen, I think, I think Shakira did probably, I mean, I don't know, she can't tell herself if she did or she didn't, but I think there was actually some level of 
postpartum depression to, to even hurting because I was paying attention, right? But here's the thing. When this is happening, it's and I'm not making an excuse for this lady because some women are just vindictive like this. Them want the man, but them don't want the picnic. But as long as the picnic come with the man, then we take the picnic. Them don't even love them own picnic. But once the man they decide to leave, you will know if that woman actually loved that child or children or not, right? Because if him decide to left, then she will fling with the picnic too. But your your package you come with your daddy, cause your daddy me want, right? In this particular case, I don't know if it's postpartum depression or if this was some vindictiveness but the couple was having an argument and it ended with the woman going up on the third fourth floor something of a building and just throwing the baby off of the building proceedings in the but she not seem too righted in her head to me or is she now playing crazy proceedings in the saint james parish court came to a dramatic halt yesterday wednesday when shamaya green the woman who is accused of killing her five-month-old daughter last December, she collapsed in court yesterday. When she wake up, Green, 27, who is charged with the murder of her infant daughter, Destiny Brown, appeared disoriented and confused. When she appeared before presiding judge, Judge Keisha Grant Price, moments before she collapsed, her body was trembling. Like them said, she did a tremble like she did a tremble, out of control tremble. And then she kept repeating stuff like, me picnic them gone left me. Me, me and me, me, me can't get me picnic them. Me no know why. Me picnic them gone left me. Them gone left me. This is what the teary eyed green kept on saying over and over. She was crying, kept repeating, me picnic them, me picnic them, 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 them both a call me. Them both a call me. A call me. A call me. I me can't get me picnic them. Them a call me. Them say mummy. 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 And every time me ask if we go to them, me can't get we go to them. Um, that's either acting up for a plea of insanity or because some people are acting wicked, you know. And when time them reach in at the trouble, consequences take them now. Them start decide to say, well, me I got play crazy if you come out of this one. Cause you wasn't crazy before, and nobody spoke of you being depressed, crazy, anything before this. So me don't know. But moments later, Green complained of feeling ill, and then she collapsed. And she was tended to by both police officers and onlookers. A first minute later. Uh, police officers and onlookers, the uh, them police officer they train. Um, do they have any first responders in these courthouses? That's a whole nother story. A few minutes later, when she managed to stand up, she had to be restrained from climbing on top of the dock railings. The dock railings. So you're in at the docks and some railings, did it? I climbed, she had climbed the dock railing them in at the courtroom. She had to be restrained from climbing on top of the dock railings. Put that, her antics, her physical behavior, along with what she kept on repeating. Sensible person knows so how you drop your picnic off a three, four, five story building, however much that building was. Um, you know why the rest of your kids are not with you, right? They're taken away. The state has them in custody or they were given to somebody else, like the other parent or something like that. But she, they are like she are here to pick them in her mind constantly. A call her, and she can't get to them, and it's haunting her. And she wants to get to them, and she in a court, a climb the dock wall and the railings and stuff. Meanwhile, they're restraining her. The court was told that the post mortem report was outstanding from the prosecution's case file. Grant Price subsequently set the case for mention on April third, when she'll be back in court while also ordering that Green should be given a psychiatric evaluation and a medical attention ahead of that particular date. Now, this happened from when, way back when, uh, December of 2023. We are in March, and now is when them just had a psychological evaluation. She should have been psych eval from day one because that would have been the most appropriate time to see what mind condition she was in 
pertaining to the act that she did. But them wait till now. But anyhow, that's how it goes in Jamaica, right? So the judge ordered that she have a psyche eval done and she have medical attention treatment before we get to that date, which is April 3rd. The judge also ordered that family members should be contacted to attend the next court session. Maybe if she feel like she have some kind of support, she will be able to calm down and face what is before her. But she probably feel like she's drowning out here and she has nobody with her. She stand up in a court by herself. Allegations are that on December 6th of 2023, about 5.35 p.m., Green was at home with her common-law husband and other relatives when she tried to have a conversation with the man about a side chick. A you see what I say? The woman did good until she find out about side chick, until she find out about relationship outside our relationship. She tried to confront him about it. An argument developed. The man put off the talk. He said, no one talk about that right now. That's not what I want to get into right now. She reportedly became enraged. She left the room, took the baby with her, and walked out of the room. She then took the child to the roof of the third floor of the family's house and threw the baby onto the concrete pit in the yard. The police were alerted, and destiny, the baby, was taken to the hospital where she died while she was being treated for trauma, blunt force trauma, all over. So, my, again, my question is postmortem, or this is a case of just being vindictive. I want to say this is a case of just being vindictive because everything was fine until you found out about side chick. Right. Uh, Yvonne Wallace says, at the end of the day, you have to be crazy to throw a child off of anywhere. It's severely disturbed. Absolutely. Absolutely. But some people, wicked like that. We could look at the Leoda Bradshaw case and say, at the end of the day, you have to be friggin' crazy to want to have a 10-month-old shot in the head in front of the mother while the mother watches. And I want to inflict that much pain in that mother. You understand? But it's done. So there's a difference between actual crazy and just some people, the psychopathic, sociopathic, wicked. There's a difference. Crazy is you are out of your element, don't know what the hell you're doing, just doing stuff. Calculated behavior that end up being wickedness is sociopathic, psychopathic. Yeah, so there's a difference. And I think in this case, that's exactly what the difference was. Me not believe say I know nothing else other than she find out say the man of woman, and that's what she did with the child. Like I said, when I started this, there are some women out there who they want the man and everything that comes with the man only if the man is loyal to them and if the man is staying with them. If that man decides to cut, even the children they had together becomes her scorned things no longer her children right and some and you know what we are going to do this discussion on another day because we have another case to follow but check this out this is the case of many children that grow up you grow up with a bitter mama you ever hear your mother say yeah that's why your daddy this and that's why your daddy that and i can't stand him ross and you look just like your thinking papa and him not help me with nothing around you and they will burden the child with all the hate and abuse and abusive language that they would normally give to the father. Because the father not around no more. Him cut. Him left him gone. And she had raised them. And you would say to yourself, well, give them up too. But she would brag later on and say, me? I never give up my pick to them even when the father walk out upon them. But mama, you should have give them up too. Because you turned the untouch of them and did more damage to them than the man who left. Him did left. Him couldn't do no more damage other than my daddy is not here. But you keep them and torture them until they were old enough to escape from you. You understand? But we're going to have that discussion on another day, though. So, on a shape up and shape up, good man. Because we know the difference with certain things. Yeah? Right. I wonder if she have a history of mental illness. And the answer is no. 
None has been said so far, but we will find out more once the psych eval is done that the judge just ordered. We might not get to the Haitian... Well, we don't have to, might not get to the Haitian story. Just put it like this and skip past that so we could get to our last story. Uh, Haiti, Haiti is in shambles, like I said. Political asylum, they're thinking that Haitian Prime Minister um, is going to be heading to Jamaica to hide out. Uh, he was found in Puerto Rico the other day and an uh, uh, airplane landed in Haiti that they thought, the, the gangsters, rebels, gun people thought he was on it and them run down that plane there like they were, if he was on that plane, them would have executed him, but he wasn't on the plane. I think they sent a test dummy plane into Haiti to see and it wasn't him. Meanwhile, he was in Puerto Rico. So the word now is that, is he going to be coming to Jamaica? Because if you know anything about Haiti and what they had been through and their former leaders, jean Bertrand Aristide, back in March of 2004, he actually ran to Jamaica as well for safety and he was granted temporary asylum. Aristide, who is still alive, he actually was... Um, exiled to Africa. So he is somewhere on the continent of Africa now watching this unfold in Haiti, probably saying to himself, good God, this is never going to end because it happened to me, it was happening before me, and it's still happening from 2004 till 2024, 20 years, two decades later. Henry, who is their current prime minister, was not elected by the Haitian people. He was just put in there after the assassination of Jovenel Moïse. And the people don't like him and them don't want him in there. And the leader of the gang factions um, in Haiti said, anyhow, him stay in there, civil war is going to happen. And the civil war is going to divide the people like this. You for him? Bah! You for him? No? Go on that side there. You for Henry? Bah! You for Henry? So basically, them all kill out the whole of the Henry supporters them. That's the plan, right? Henry is actually a neurosurgeon. He's a brilliant man. He's a politician as well. He's been serving since 2021. The people tired of him. Uh, they, Jamaica's concerned, though, want to know if Henry is going to be heading to Jamaica. And Jamaican officials have said this unequivocally. No, he's not coming here. We have no talks of him being here or heading this way. And we don't have nothing for doing nothing. And he's not going to be heading this way. So don't bother send your mercenaries this way or nothing. We don't have nothing for doing nothing. I'll close out the Haitian part by saying this. I think that Jovenel Moise had good intentions for Haiti. And they executed a man that had good intentions for them. And now Haiti is on fire. And that is their karma they must pay. And that's exactly what we are seeing unfold before us. But the Jovenel Moise assassination, I think, is much deeper than any one of us actually think we know it is about. So we are going to left that for today and move along. Just for the Jamaican people to know that no, Haiti's prime minister is not coming to Jamaica. Your officials in Jamaica have made it known that we have no dealings with that and he is not coming here for no political asylum or anything like that, right? All right. The JLP counselor, Innes, that left that message that said that he is walking away from the JLP party because he must protect himself, his family, his dignity, his pride, all these other things, took his talk back. Councillor elect for the Waterloo Division, Winston Innes. Jamaica Labour Party says that he has not sent a formal letter withdrawing from the JLP, despite the voice note which suggested that he was walking away. I don't know why, but listening to him, I had this picture in my mind where him they have like somebody turn up beside him with a gun, or somebody, we call it, you get a page. Somebody page him. Somebody probably say, listen. You can't run enough. You tell the people about you know, they are Jamaica. No matter which part you go, we know where you there. It's like we have a truck upon you, right? 
You think you're going to mash up this party here and just run away and go so? Brother, you were dead and nobody don't know who do it. You understand? So you make the decision and make the right decision. Now you have 12 hours to do it, not 24. And him jump right back pan and start backtracking everything that he said. This is what I think happened. Now in the audio message, which Enos said, was sent to the JLP affiliated WhatsApp group. The councillor elect announced his exit from the governing party, saying that he will be an independent representative after he returns from a trip overseas, indicating he was not in Jamaica and he will be back on the 3rd, but the 3rd of never. Also, not time stamping when he will be back in Jamaica or where he was at overseas. He also said that he had had enough of the disrespect from the party and that the cup is now full. And him not take no more. However, in his statement on Wednesday, Enos withdrew that comment and said that the sentiments were expressed in a heat of the moment. Mina by that. You are a seasoned politician and seasoned member of this party. For decades you've been doing this. You just you don't just issue that to the public and then try reel that back in. Something is out of control behind the scenes. That we can't see. If Innes had followed through. On his pronouncements. To leave the JLP. And become an independent representative. It would have meant. A 2019 split. In the Kingston and St. Andrew. Municipal Corporation. In favor of the People's National Party. He would have given. Power to the PNP. That would have. Break, broken the current. 2020 tie after last week's local government election. The People's National Party has been able to appoint, would have been able to appoint both the mayor and the deputy mayor of the city of Kingston. So they would have gotten total, complete control of the city of Kingston. Um, what is Jamaica's capital? Okay, because enough people think I'm going to be a true I don't know if it's a tourist go or, or Ochi. Um, so it's a hot spot. That's, that's, that's the hub. The brain. Right. Now, the People's National Party would have been able to take and seize complete control both for mayor and deputy mayor. That is how detrimental his decision to walk out was. So you think somebody never find him and tap him, so? Oh, yeah, hide. Well, we're there. You never think we could have found you. Come on, go do what's right, man. Right. Instead of only appointing the mayor after winning the popular majority in the tied KSAMC. So regardless, the People's National Party will be appointing the mayor. They won that in the popular majority vote. But the deputy mayor will be appointed from the JLP. Right. So that, them page him. He said, I met last night with members of my division and party workers, and I wish to state that I am committed to resolving internally any issues which might have arisen that led to my earlier sentiments. You met with members of your division and party workers, and you are outside of the island. Hmm. You did fly, come back in quick. Or you did never left, you did that somewhere hide. He also reiterated that he remains a member of the JLP, and he is committed to the view that this party, his party, is best placed to govern Jamaica at both the local and central government levels. I want to thank everyone in my party and across Jamaica for their support, he said. He also said that he was surprised that his initial comments were leaked to the media. I am disappointed that personal discussions made it into the public domain. Them people are not have no accountability, you know, and them not have no intentions of ever speaking truth, you know. Anything for cover up. I am disappointed that personal discussions made, made it into the public domain. 
Mm. Who you did have that personal discussion there with? Because we have to get to the bottom of this. No pun intended. But who could have possibly leaked that if that was said in a private conversation and not meant for public consumption? Ennis went on to caution people that are making personal statements in the heat of the moment. He might caution people now who make personal statements in the heat of the moment and which are meant for internal discussions to be careful about the domain used to express these sentiments and the words that they choose. He ended up by saying he will not be offering further comments at this time. Chat to me back like Lady Sa say, me gone. <laughs> Yo, here what? Joke thing that I deal with. But they can't, they can't fool all of us. We know what I'm going. But at the end of the day, let's go. Put on my handcuffs. Come out of this block. A government badness around the place. That's that. All right. Let's get into the Leota Bradshaw um, case now. This, uh, this is our where our buck stops this morning. Boy, may I tell you. I have a whole video coming out today on what I believe about the death penalty in Jamaica. And Paula Llewellyn's claim that she is putting the death penalty on the table in this case. You, you, I, I suggest you watch that video. But for now, let's go with this. Director of Public Prosecution, Paula Llewellyn, has announced that her office has served a death penalty notice to David Smith. So when they are going to issue the death penalty against you in your case, they must serve you notice first that you will be facing the death penalty. And they have done that. This is not her saying, I'm thinking about doing it. This is her telling us that they have done it. He's been served. He's the alleged trigger man who was implicated in the murder for hire plot that claimed the lives of little 10-month-old Soraya Paulwell and her mother, 27-year-old Tashina Patterson. Soraya Paulwell was the daughter of Member of Parliament for East Kingston and Port Royal, Philip Paulwell. The notice was served on Smith when he and four of his co-accused appeared in the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston yesterday. His co-accused are Leota Bradshaw, which is the U.S. Navy petty officer who described herself as Paulwell's wife. Even though she is not his wife on paper, she considers herself his wife. She's been with him long enough. They have a child together. I believe it's been like eight years or something like that. And with whom she shares a daughter. Bradshaw's cousin is the next one, Roland Balfour. And then Bajorn Black also. They are all charged with various offenses relative to the overall crime, including murder and kidnapping. Now, Bradshaw, Leota Bradshaw, the paid Navy petty officer. However, she's the only one facing two counts of capital murder in the matter. But she is not the one that they want to 